listen to for the floor. To another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, you enjoyed that little uh, musical intro, uh, a song by Steve Martin from uh, Saturday Night Live Skit. I'll give you the link to that video down below. But um, I was amazed. I was around during King Tut's uh, exposition. I think I actually went to see the show, but it was a long time ago. So uh, it was quite impressive. So then Delta, just last year, decided to make a pen commemorating Tutankhamun, and this is the pen. So if you haven't seen my other video, I uh, purchased it at the Long Island Pen Show, and I purchased it from one of the uh, classic vendors that are there, the Fountain Pen Hospital. It was a show special, so it was at a pretty decent discount, one that made uh, the decision kind of a no-brainer from my perspective. This is the new uh, Delta packaging, I would say. It combines some of the elements of their previous packaging with some uh, newer elements. And I think that the main thing is, is they um, are also trying to be more cost competitive, more aware of the marketplace. And so therefore this pen is part of that. And we'll discuss a little bit of what I view because I have a few Deltas and uh, this is comparable to those with uh, some small differences. The um, cardboard case just slides off, and it's, it's not heavy cardboard, it's just, you know, there for protection and a little bit of advertising. You get your uh, Delta instruction manual, which is with all the Deltas. And then you get a small booklet, in relationship to some of the other booklets I've gotten uh, with some of the unique uh, Delta pens. Yeah, it gives you a little intro on, on the pen. Gives you some details which are very nice, which we'll discuss when we look at the pen. It also talks about, you know, how Delta makes it, and it's very clear it's only 188 uh, fountain pens. A um, little bit of an interesting way they spelled fountain pen. But, you know, that's what's nice about it. And it gives you your international warranty. And that's it. Like a very short booklet, which is fine, again, saving money. But the packaging is something I haven't seen from Delta, at least from the Marte Mordena ones that I have, is this is the one with a nice uh, clear printed on plastic cover, which is held down by two screws. In the early days, this used to have a, the Delta nib logo, which you see here on the top of the screw, but now they're just generic, so that's another cost savings measure. You only have to undo one screw, and you slide the cover off. And that reveals the pen, which is very secure in this kind of hourglass shape. I mean, I think this is a great design. Uh, holds the pen securely, and it's certainly not over the top. So we'll take out the pen, and we'll put the packaging away. I'll put the screw on because the uh, little piece drops out if you don't uh, secure it. So this is the pen. I have some sunlight, some LED lighting, so hopefully it's bringing out what I consider to be a, a fairly attractive pen, a fairly well done pen. Um, done with some elements that commemorate the theme. So one of the common things that Delta's always done is they have some type of emblem at the top of the uh, cap. And here it's kind of the uh, facade of, uh, of King Tut, surrounded by a little bit of uh, scroll work. 
And probably the most uh, noticeable design element, it is his beard, is now the clip. I assume this is a casting, and they have a little bit of a knob down there, so it will be a functional clip. It's fairly stiff, so it'll work. It'll slide over uh, fairly thick clothing. And then what I think is really nice is Delta has also done their unique engraving. You know, it tells you what the pen is. It tells you the manufacturer. And as you go down to the bottom of the cap, it shows you the number. So this is 181 out of 188. There are only two pens left when I bought this one to find a medium, and I wanted a medium nib, so that's what uh, ended up this pen being in uh, my possession. A nice uh, embedded uh, red band here and then a blue band in between the two cap bands. It's a nice little design feature. And those colors are supposedly represented as some of the enameling that they uh, used in uh, the tomb. The band around the bottom of the barrel is rendition of uh, one of the knives that were in his uh, you know, burial ground or esophagus, and then another red band to matches the one in the cap. The material is um, interesting. Maybe you might call it like a sand color. It's not a blind cap. This is not a capture converter, which is a filling system that Delta has been using a lot on pens. It's just an unscrew, which is classic of Delta. It's a little bit less than one turn. You have a section made out of the same material as the cap and barrel, which is always nice. I like that. And then you have um, a Fusion nib, which I think is kind of different for a limited edition pen. This is medium, and obviously it's inked up. Standard Delta feed, which I find consistently works well. You know, nice tipping material, and it looks like it's a little bit off-center, but that's never hurt the operation, and it just takes a slight touch to get it back on there. A lot of discussion about Fusion nibs. I think they could have saved money and not put a Fusion nib in here. It doesn't really change the writing characteristics that I've been able to find. Uh, Delta nibs have all written very well, in my experience. It can be posted. It makes for a fairly long pen posted, and it is a little bit back heavy, so definitely uh, the size of the pen fits well in the hand, and it can easily be written with uh, unposted. So this pen is still available. Um, my guess is, is Delta tried to come out with a limited edition pen, and 188 is a fairly low number in, in limited editions. Um, and it came out in July of 2016. So the fact that about six or seven months later, you know, they're being uh, discounted. They're usually discounted about 20%, and, and I got 40% uh, at the show special. So... I also kind of come up with a, a nice ink to use. So one of the things I thought I would do is um, compare this limited edition pen with another limited edition pen. This is the Toreg, um, the in, in, in Indigenous Peoples Collection. And again, there's a lot of common elements in these two limited edition pens. One is a, a unique clip design reminiscent of the theme. In this case, it's a sword that this tribe used a lot. Also, um, you know, something in the top of the cap reminiscent of the theme. I think in this case, uh, the metal is cast sterling, and in this case, it, it's not. It's, it's a non-precious metal. You have some bands embedded. This is a blue resin, which is a color reminiscent of, the, of again, the, uh, the people that the pen is supposed to represent. Nothing in the barrel, but at the, at the bottom of the barrel, there's a nice, um, again, sterling ring. So it's a little um, less classic design. And they're both unscrew fairly well. They both have a very nice section, which is indicative of the same materials that were used within the body of the pen. Of course, this one, the nib has a unique stamping on it, again, representative of the uh, peoples and also it's an 18 karat nib versus uh, a fusion nib so you know if, if delta was to have done that with uh, the king tut pen it probably would have added a few hundred dollars to the cost of the pen and i'm certain they've uh, they came up with a price point that they wanted to meet and they were able to to do that with uh, still some unique elements in the pen and some things that make it interesting and and germane also to the theme a size comparison view of the king tut the Pelican M800, 
a Twisby 580, and a Lamy Safari. As you can see, it's the longest pen of this group. It's actually pretty good in girth, too, so it's definitely not a small pen, uh, which is also very typical of Deltas. Good to do a nib and section close up. So again, the Delta holds its own. It's a pretty girthy section. Um, the nib's a fusion nib, so it's two-tone. Uh, then you got your M800, uh, your Twisby 580, and lastly, Lamy Safari, which really doesn't hold up in this comparison, but a lot of people are familiar with the pen and have used it, so it's good to use as a perspective. Fortunately, I was able to pair up what I think is the only ink to use in this pen, Gold Antigua from Robert Oster. I mean, uh, Gold Antique, King Tut, say no more. As I mentioned, this pen can be uh, written with uh, unposted, and that's the way we'll do the writing test. It lays down a wet line, which is very reminiscent of, of, of Delta pens, and I think that really works well with this ink. Um, if you put a little pressure on it, you just get a lot more flow. And I just love this ink. It, it, does a nice shading job. I'm, I'm going to do a review. I got three Oost, uh, Robert Oster inks at the uh, LA Pen Show, so I'm preparing to just do a video on those, but this is a wonderful gold ink. I mean, I think this is, you know, people put gold flecks in it, but this is, they've uh, really nailed the color, and like I say, I, I love the shading. This is a smooth nib. Again, um, those of you that may be familiar with my videos or familiar with Delta pens are aware of, of their nibs. Um, so this is typical of their nibs. I've written uh, many, many pages with this pen and the only issue that I had, which I can't relate to whether it was ink or pen, but using it on um, copy paper, which was very absorbent, um, I got a little bit of a dryness, but you know, I just reprimed it with a converter and it worked okay. So hopefully you've enjoyed this kind of like another eye candy. I haven't done an eye candy uh, pen for a week, a couple weeks. So thank you for viewing. May you have many great writing experiences. Enjoy them. Enjoy life. Till later. Bye.